Welcome back to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? Uh, once again, every day's a holiday. I don't want to waste one second talking about me. We have someone extremely special to the show, um, and to Madison in Wisconsin, um, offensive coordinator Phil Longo. Thank you so much for spending um, some time with us today so we can pick your brain about, you know, what the season and what the offense is going to look like. I appreciate the invite. I'm excited to be here. Before we get into it with Coach Longo, I want to remind you guys that we are presented to you by betonline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. So head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit using our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah. So you're just mentioning spring ball and how exciting that time is to coach these guys up. They are literally brand new. What has your experience been? I mean, we're jumping right in, coach. I'm sorry, but what has your experience been just jumping into these guys, this Wisconsin culture and the Wisconsin guys that are part of the team already? Well, I think anytime you you uh, enter a new place, a new program, a new team, new players, you know, you, you want to be careful not to try and go too fast with anything because um, as we were talking earlier, this stuff is very natural to me and to Coach Bicknell and to Coach Everett because we've been through this process with this offense before. And you just have to kind of remind yourself uh, – as much as we want to be up tempo and want to do everything quickly, you got to you got to go slowly with the teaching process. The good thing is these guys have a very very high care factor. They, these kids are very passionate about football, which is a huge part of the learning curve. Is whether or not you're interested or not. The second thing is they they're really very eager to get out on the field to prove what they can do in a different system. Um, and then thirdly, I'd like to believe that we are practicing what we're preaching and that is to keep things really really simple so that it's easier to learn and and we can start repping it quicker i think the more reps we get in the better we get at what we're doing but you mentioned coming and being new what was that process like what is it like when you get a, a phone call from you know coach fickle like what was that whole thing like you're in your experience well you know it's it's exciting for me personally because I, you know, Coach Brown asked me a long time ago when I really first got to North Carolina, he said, uh, what, what would you leave here for? And I said, Coach, the truth is I'm not, I wouldn't leave um, for anything but uh, what I thought was a, you know, a really good head job at a place with resources to win, um, which, which cuts out a lot of places. And so he said, well, would you leave here for an OC job? And I said, truthfully, there are very, very few, I think, if any. You know, the one thing I did point out was if I ever had an opportunity um, like I had had before and turned down or missed the opportunity to join, was to coach with, with Luke Fickle. And, you know, I had an opportunity when he went to Cincinnati to do that. Um, I, I ultimately chose for my family to go to Ole Miss. Um, I had a wonderful time at Ole Miss. We had a really nice run there offensively. But I, and, I, and I told Luke soon after, though, I I felt um, there was just a little tug there. You know, I just felt like um, as excited as I was and as much as we attacked the stuff that we did at Ole Miss, it, it just kind of bugged me. I just i have always had um, trust in my gut instinct and my gut instinct when I flew out to Columbus at Ohio State to meet and interview with Fick was a really good one. It was just my kind of person. It was my kind of guy, my kind of uh, football coach, personality-wise. And um, I thought it would be a really good uh, relationship. And I and I, I felt like maybe I missed the boat there a little bit. And so to have an opportunity now, you know, now I'm happy I did that because it's given us an opportunity to get together at a place like Wisconsin, of all places. And so 
you're coming to the Big Ten. You have an opportunity to go to the Big Ten Championship every year, and you're working for a guy like Luke Fickle, and and we're running the offense that we're, we're so passionate about and have had success with. And so it's really was just a no brainer for me. So one of the coaches that you know followed you, the coach that followed you, really from uh, North North Carolina, Coach McNell, is someone that I, I think obviously he's coming in to coach Wisconsin's offensive line, which has been the glamour position <laughs> for Wisconsin alongside running back for a long time. You don't see that a lot of schools. What is it about Coach McNell that said I want to make sure that I bring him with me from Chapel Hill to Madison? Well, you know the, the thing that I I think about as you ask that question is. Uh, you know, I, I initially posed a question to Coach Bignell. I said, listen, if, if I were going to take an OC job somewhere else, which surprised him because he knows I probably wasn't going to do it other than for Luke. Um, I didn't tell him where yet. And he just said, uh, you know, we got such a great thing here. We've got a Heisman quarterback coming back candidate. We've got nine out of 11 starters coming back on offense. We're rolling on offense. We got veterans. The guys know the system. We're living in Chapel Hill. We're working for Mac Brown. We're at, you know, we're in Tar Heel country. I mean, you know, it just, there's, it's just a, it's an outstanding college football situation. And so he's like, what are we? And I said, well, it would be it at Wisconsin. And he was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That- <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of how I felt when, when Luke and I talked. And so, um, it, it is just such a great opportunity. It's an opportunity to win at a high level. And, 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 and you get here and you meet these guys in the locker room. It's such a, we, we left such a great locker room at North Carolina. Um, and, and, and then we get here and we're received by another great one. So coach and I have been really, um, fortunate to be around the players that we've had the, the opportunity to be around. Um, you know, and I, and I think from a, an old line standpoint, an offensive coordinator standpoint, the key hire, and that's not to say that your running back or your tight end or your um, receiver coach are not important. We're all equally as important to one another, but I, you've got to have an old line coach that is flexible. You have to have one that understands the system. You have to have one that is really, really good on game day. Um, and you got to have one, obviously, that you can trust. And Coach McNeil is all of those things. And, and he is by far one of the best of line coaches I've been around. I really don't plan on working another job without him. And so we're both super thrilled to be here. And then we get plugged in with Coach Brown and Coach Spaulding and Coach Letton. And I, and I think um, there's a really, really good chemistry right now in the offensive staff. Good. You, you know, how exciting is it to bring your offense to the Big Ten? And I have to ask you, is the air raid the actual term for it? Because I feel like I've, I've I've watched a lot of stuff, and I we have to go back to the culture at one point. But it seems like you're going to run with the guys you have, which I think are some of the best to ever step on the field. You said you're going to run a lot. So is it tip? Is it really the air raid, or is it um, an evolution of that with the run game? Well, well, one yes, we're extremely excited to be here in Wisconsin and running what we run. You know, uh, sadly. Um, kind of bittersweet. I had a conversation, you know, Mike Leach passed on us on a Saturday or really a Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And uh, I spoke to him on Friday and he was just overjoyed, super elated that um, we were coming to Wisconsin and couldn't wait to see us run the offense in the Big Ten. And uh, so that was kind of fun. Um, and then obviously uh, what transpired wasn't a great thing, but because he's been such a great mentor and friend to me. But to answer your question, I'd say that um, it is 100% air raid philosophy. It is 100% um, air raid in nature when we're throwing the football. Um, and we've taken that same philosophy. I mean, we're going to run the grass the same way we, we throw the grass. And we're going to spread the field out to create space so that we can throw to the receivers and the tight ends and the backs we're also going to spread the field out so that maybe um, the running backs here at Wisconsin are getting tagged with a few less helmets each play, you know, and, and hopefully we can take a little bit of pressure off the offensive line and the tight ends. And, and that is not um, an indictment on what Wisconsin has done sure. here. We, we just decided in this offense uh, that we did not want to be 
one dimensional. Um, and, and we felt like the running game was as vital to winning football games as, as it is throwing the football. And, and the truth is the, the, the philosophy really is to take what the defense gives us. And I think that's given a lot of lip service at a lot of places and it truly is what we live by. And if you're going to live by that, you better be able to run the ball as well as you throw it, you know, and, and, and I've said this in previous uh, interviews, but you look at like the perfect example of this is in 2020, we play wake forest. They load the box seven and eight people. They're, they're just determined to stop the run game. Sam Howell throws for 550. We run for over 200. We score 50 something points. We have over 700 yards of offense, but 550 of it is in the air and we win the ball game. Three weeks later, we're in the Orange Bowl. We're at the Orange Bowl uh, where Miami plays and we're playing a very talented defense there. And they do everything to take away RPO throws and the deep ball game and the intermediate pass game. They drop seven religiously and they play six in the box and here we are three weeks later and we're running the ball for 550 yards, throwing for two something. We got 60 something points and 700 yards and we did it on the other side. And those were just two drastic examples, three weeks apart in the same system of us being able to take full advantage of either side of it. So I don't care if we throw it 40, run it 40, um, or if it's 70, 10, I just care that we're doing it efficiently and that we're attacking, you know, the grass that the defense has given us. And so we may look very different week to week, depending on what the defense emphasizes. So uh, oh, you, you oh. mentioned, oh, I was, uh, you mentioned quickly <laughs> Mike Leach and he's been one of some, someone I've just long, long admired. And um, I know you coached under him for, for a while and he was very influential on you. Like you just mentioned, what's the biggest piece of advice that coach Leach gave you off the field? Off the field, I you know, one, I didn't coach with him, but I've known him yeah. 1996, and we've been close since about 2000. That's what kind of when the relationship really heated up, and I think that's when a true friendship started. Um, it's actually how I met Cliff Kingsbury. He was sitting in the quarterback room when he played for Mike, um, and those two have been very influential uh, in, my, in my career with regards to what we do. But I, I think uh, the best off-the-field advice I've gotten from Mike was uh, not not to give uh, keeping it simple lip service was to, you know, every time I go see him or I would go see him, you know, numerous times during the year, each, each year, uh, you, you might get a tidbit or a nugget or a new route technique or a, a variation of a play. But um, it was a yearly reminder to me of how important the simplicity of the system was. And, uh, you know, because as you learn and study football throughout the year, maybe the two of you, myself, anybody interested in the sport, you can build quite a library of great things to run, you know, and everything looks good on Sunday when it scores a touchdown in the Giants game, but everything doesn't always fit your system and you can only be good at so much. And so I made it a point to go see him one, just because I enjoyed his company, but two, it was that constant reminder, and that was his most consistent off the field advice: was to keep it simple for your players, so we could play fast and they could be the athletes that you recruited them to be. Believe in Badgers is excited to be brought to you by Infinigods. Infinigods is a gaming studio with a suite of free, fun to play games centered around ancient mythologies and civilizations. Visit Infinigods.com to play their first game, Infinimerge, and learn about their upcoming tower defense game. Play for fun or play to compete and take your shot at winning digital collectibles. That's Infinigods at Infinigods.com, unleashing the power of blockchain games. Coach, I, you mentioned before that um, the O-line coach is the most important, or one of them, as, as your team. Speaking for myself, as a fullback now, with no neck, I think you're the most exciting hire outside of like fickle and the entire, because you're going to bring something that we've never seen before. Every alumni that I've talked to is ecstatic about your hire. Um, what does that mean? Like to come into Wisconsin as this brand, you know, Barry built this, this unbelievable brand 
and you're going to come and really put a stamp on something that's been very special to the whole entire state and the alumni across the nation. Well, I, truthfully, I would tell you this. I it, This is what I'm supposed to say, right? This is the coaching rhetoric I'm supposed to, to spew out here. But the truth is, sincerely, I am ecstatic about being in Wisconsin. And, and so many people have uh, referred to the fact that my wife, Tanya, is from here. Um, I met her one state over in Minnesota um, when she was the head basketball coach at Minnesota Duluth. And we, um, so we, we are aware of what life is like here. Um, it's not nearly as cold in Madison. It's beautiful here as it was in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, but I, I am more honored to have the opportunity to be here. I'm excited about um, having the opportunity to be a part of so many great coaches that have been here and be a great part of a legacy of winning that, that exists here. And, you know, one thing that is interesting to me about the university of Wisconsin is they have won over the years very consistently, but very quietly. And uh, it, it's not a spotlight hoopla bells and whistles program. This is a meat and potatoes, physical downhill, smack you in the mouth, a uh, tough guy program, and I have no desire to change that with what we do on offense. I simply, uh, my goal is to continue to run the ball the way Wisconsin has always been able to successfully run the football. We'd like to add a passing game that's equally as explosive so that we are uh, twice as difficult to defend. Um, and and I, I just, I just want to do our part offensively to help you know the other half of the football team and Coach Fickle uh, compete to get to the Big Ten championship every year that we're here. So I got to ask quickly, Coach: Is there a fullback in this offense? What what's a fullback? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, that's the answer I like to hear. Not really, oh. but <laughs> they do a lot of that stuff with our tight end. So I I don't know. Uh, there's real. Speaking of which, uh, a good friend of ours, former Badger offensive lineman David Mormon, had to ask me to ask you. Hippo package, barge package, like super heavy. Any chance we're going to see any of that again in Madison? So if he if he wants goal line, short yardage, four minute, um, obvious run type situation, anything at Ole Miss at Sam Houston State at uh, North Carolina, he'd see that. So I don't I don't see that changing. All right, all right. Yeah, you mentioned Sam Houston State. You took over there. Um, you took over for Willie Fritz at Sam Houston State. So you are from very familiar, clearly, with changing the entire offense of a program overnight. What is sort of the biggest takeaway you took from that transition that you can apply here? Well, you know, that was a unique transition. One, Willie Fritz, outstanding football coach and, and ran the program in the right way. Kind of a tough-nosed, disciplined guy. I, I, I consider him to be very similar to Coach Fickle. Um, Fick is extremely progressive also, and I think that um, – it's, it's one of the reasons that he, that, that he wins, you know, it's not like he won one year at Cincinnati, you know, he, he, he has done this over the long haul and he's done it at Ohio state. And, you know, he, he, he's never known anything but winning all the way back to his years as a, you know, a, a state heavyweight championship wrestler. I know he's going to love that. I said that, but it, it the, the guy competes and, and, and he's got this very strong desire to win as we all do. But, I think that message um, gets translated to the team, and I think that's kind of how he lives his life. And the and the players, I think, respond. I think the coaches respond to that. Um, my mentality is the same, and uh, you know, so it's the transition of going from the triple option to the you know the spread and the air raid that we went to at Sam Houston couldn't be more drastic. Couldn't be further away on the on the spectrum. But you had the same care factor and the same passion and the same desire to win. And, you know, it, and that's really what it's all about. I mean, at the end of the day, football is about blocking and tackling. And so maybe we're going to catch a few balls too, you know, and that's, that's no different here. But I, I think there's a lot more overlap here, you know, than uh, going into a system that's triple option that was so different in just about every position. And I truthfully think we have some really, really special skill players here um, that maybe you might not know is are, are capable of doing quite what they may do this year. Cause I think that the offense will give them a platform to do more and show what it is they're truly capable of. 
But you mentioned, so in the air raid, I, I'm assuming one of the most important positions is a quarterback, which in the past we really have seen a par, I mean, maybe par play from our QBs. How amazing and how drastic is the, the quarterback room now from what it was six months ago? And how exciting is that for you? Well, obviously, it's always been a system that um, is attractive offensive system to a quarterback or to receivers. But, you know, truthfully, as Braylon Allen has so, and I'm thankful for it, has pointed out, it, it really does help running backs and tight ends as well. And it, this is a skill position offense. And it's driven by our quarterback from a decision-making standpoint. Um, and, and they'll run the ball in this offense a little bit. They're obviously going to throw it. They, they need to be great distributors of the football. So, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I've always, um, I felt like we're going to recruit quarterbacks who are athletically gifted enough to do all the things that we're going to ask them to do in the athletic realm on the football field. So we wouldn't recruit them if they couldn't run well enough. We wouldn't recruit them if they didn't have a strong enough arm. I wouldn't recruit them if they weren't accurate enough. And then off the field, you know, it's harder to do the research on the mental side of it. Are they leaders? Are they good character guys? Um, are they obsessed with the game? You know, and, and are they willing and able to learn the game mentally at a level where they can, they can be elite once they get on the field? Because you can take great athletes and great passers who don't know the game well mentally, and you can make them average. Um, and, and that's there are a lot of more talented quarterbacks in the country than there are effective quarterbacks, you know. And so you've got to find that unique blend of uh, of a guy that can do it both on the field and prepare for it off the field. So the guys that we brought in and and the guys that we have in the room right now, that's what we're trying to decide: do they have all the athletic tools? And and you know, if I do my job, we'll be able to train some of them so that when they get to the field on Saturday. It's about making consistently good decisions. It's hard if you have 80 plays in a game to make 80 really, really good, consistent, successful decisions. It's hard to do anything in life 80 times. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I, I'm going to look off and get distracted. You know what I mean? After, sure. after 10 reps, you know, it's hard for a human being to do something at an elite level 80 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're quarterbacks to do. So that's really my job Monday to Friday is to train them to do that. And so they fall back on that on Saturday because it has to be instinctive. Mm -hmm. And then they already have the talent or we wouldn't recruit them here to do it. So that's the process with cues. I'm excited about our room. Um, and I think uh, hopefully the fans will be also. I'm already excited about it. I'm excited about the entire offense changing. Um, Coach, you mentioned how important spring ball is and it's coming up quick. Everything's changed. So what is, is, is there a, is there more to the process or you're going in like you went in for the past, you know, 20 years? Is it, is it the same? Is it different? Is it more? Is it less? What's that going to be like for the team? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, the offense in a nutshell is kind of a microcosm of this whole process. You, the offense hasn't changed in 20 something years. It doesn't mean we haven't made upgrades or improvements to it. But, you know, the way I liken it to, from an example standpoint with the kids is it's it's like a Ferrari that um, we're going to continue to enter this Ferrari in the race every year. But in the off season, you know, we're going to soup the engine up. We're going to shave the car down. We're going to put better tire. We're going to do whatever we got to do to make it a better version of what it is for next year. And that's really the way we look at the offense. The offense is, is the offense. It's flexible enough to take advantage of the talent that the players have. It's always going to be, the emphasis will always be dictated by the best talent that we have each year. And that changes from year to year. Um, but the system is still the system. So that it, the vehicle stays the same, but, and, and that's really um, how you approach spring ball. The process is going to be install the entire offense in the first four days. Then we and it'll look ugly and we won't be very good at it. Um, and then we're going to reinstall it days five through eight. Um, and it'll look better and we'll start to polish and improve some things. And then from nine through 15, 
the two the two focuses there are to start you know then the rhythm kicks in and the understanding kicks in and the the learning process is less of an obstacle and we start playing more instinctively and things become a lot more positive and in addition to that we'll work on situational football and so by the end of 15 days we want to have a very good understanding of what we're supposed to be doing and we want to be pretty far down the road from a fundamental and a technical standpoint with regards to execution and the commitment in the summer for the players how much they get done in the summer on their own will catapult us into August. And then that'll be where we have to start prepping ourselves for the opposition. But how excited are you for Buffalo game one in Madison? It could be the Dallas Cowboys. It wouldn't matter to me. <laughs> I, I, we're going to study what they do on defense. I won't know any of their names. Don't care who the team is. I'm going to know their numbers, their position. And our game plan, and I'm going to do my best to try to make sure that our 11 starters know it also. And we're going to attack that game the way we attack and then hope to attack the other 11 that we have on the schedule. All right. Last minute here. What's been the best part about the city of Madison so far for you? Wow. There's been a lot. That's hard. My, my, my kids, you know, I asked them that what's the best part of their trip so far, this, this new home that we have, and they rattled off a dozen different things. Um, I would say that uh, being here with Coach Fickle is one. I would say enjoying the character of the locker room is two. I would say the uniqueness of uh, Madison. Um, you can pretty much get anywhere in 20 minutes. Uh, I, I'm a big food guy, so I would say that uh, the level of, of, of really good food here, and I'll, and I'll give a little plug to Naples right now, um, has been outstanding and a pleasant surprise. And so... You know, every day we learn something new. So I, I, I'm a quality of life here overall. Maybe that's too general a term, but the overall quality of life here is outstanding. And that's been the overall highlight outside of football. I'd love to hear it, Coach. If you're a state guy, Tornado Room is my favorite place in the world. So I'm just throwing that out there. Been there and done that already. <laughs> well, I like to hear that. Wando's has the coldest Coors Lights, if you like Coors Lights. So yeah. You me at Wando's very much. I don't think <laughs> I don't think you should go there either. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of my time from uh the Badgers, you know, back in the day. Coach, I have one question. I have a hat here. I think it about putting it on eBay. So I'll get your uh yeah if you just change that to the tight end I think we could sell a lot of <laughs> I don't know how to get the stitching out of it, but uh, make fullbacks great again. It might be a, a collector's item uh, for Wisconsin coming up here. They're going to do the same thing. So you can call them what you want and we're going to use them. <laughs> that way, but um, we'd like to think that tight ends are just a little bit better catching the football and, and can block the same. And so those are the guys that will utilize. All right. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. So I, I feel bad for Bernie. What's, what's a 6'2", 270-pound thumper going to do in, in, in Phil Longo's offense? Play tight end. <laughs> Hold the headset. <laughs> <laughs> don't let anyone near coach. All right. Well, uh, listen, coach, uh, we cannot thank you uh, enough for uh, you're your spending some time here today with us. Uh, best of luck this season. Um, and thanks for everyone for tuning in today to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network presented by betonline.ag. And until next time on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Good luck, coach. Good Pleasure luck, coach. meeting you. Have a good See one. you soon, hopefully.